Hello. It's just about the middle of March here in the UK and we've had some frost forecast for later this week. So that's one of the reasons I won't be sowing any carrots today. Uh, another reason is that there isn't enough light. Um, it just gets dark too soon. So I'm going to leave that for another week or two uh, before I do that job. But what I want to do today is I want to show you how I prepare for success. Hold on to that expression, prepare for success. And I also want to show you uh, how I manage my expectations. That's another one to hold on to and I'll explain that later in the video. And also in this video I'll show you the very 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 best bit about growing carrots. That's a carrot reveal and that's right at the end of this video where I'll show you a number of carrot reveals and I want you to also hold on to this that each one of those screenshots is a delivery of carrots from one of these small 10 inch water buckets. Each of those screenshots is a delivery from one of these small 10 inch water buckets. Okay, prepare for success. What do we need to do? Well, we need to have all the bits and pieces and the bits and pieces I like to have is I've got a, a water spray. I like to spray seeds when I first plant them. Uh, if you deluge them with lots of water, you'll just wash them out of the pot. You'll wash them out of the bucket. Got some carrot seeds, obviously. If we look on the back, this packet tells me that there are 1,600 seeds in there. Hey, I'm only growing in a 10 inch pot. And this is where manager expectations comes in. Uh, and there's a tip on here that tells me for best results, uh, deep dug ground and soil free from stones. Well, we're in a 10 inch pot. All this soil has been out of this pot, in this pot, out of this pot, in this pot. That's got to equate to 10 inch deep dug, has it not? And all of the soil in this pot has been through this garden riddle. Okay, let's put these seeds to one side. I like to use a small bottle top with some water in and a matchstick to pick seeds up. You'll find that if you wet the end of the matchstick and there's a seed, you will be able to pick it up. It's easy. I have numerous videos on YouTube showing me doing that. It's easy, believe me. And if you don't believe me, if you want to do a small trial yourself, put some seeds on your kitchen table after you've watched this, wet a matchstick, pick them up. Eh? There's the proof. Do it yourself. Put those to one side. This is a polystyrene base from a 10 inch pizza. I think I've had to trim it slightly to make it fit this uh, bucket. Uh, if you're growing in a five gallon bucket, presumably you need a bigger pizza base, but this works for me. All the soil in this bucket has been through this garden riddle. There are no stones in that soil, none whatsoever. This is just an old piece of mesh. Now I use this to enable me to manage my expectations. Uh, it helps if your dexterity isn't as good as it might be, your eyesight isn't as good as it might be, and your spatial awareness isn't as good as it might be. This is just an old piece of mesh, plastic mesh, that I cut with the scissors to fit in the top of that pot when it's full of soil. Okay, now as you can see, this soil has been riddled, and this is our market. I have several buckets like this, uh, and the ones that are riddled are the ones I'm going to be using for the long root vegetables, in this case carrots, but it might be beetroot, it might be parsnips. Okay, let's put that to one side. So this soil now is filled up to nearly the top of this bucket, and what I want to do is I want to sow my seeds thinly, I want to give them an equal amount of space in this bucket and I want to manage my expectations by doing that. If I do that 
I will not have to thin these carrots out. Such a waste. The seeds germinated and you pull it out, throw it away. It's got to be a waste. And the other thing of course is, you'll pull, probably pull the smallest seed out. The smallest seedling. That might even be the strongest, it might have just taken a bit longer to germinate. You might be throwing yeah, you potentially your best carrots out. But you don't need to do that. And the other thing of course is that when you're thinning carrots, um, you give carrot fly an opportunity, don't you? You open the soil up, carrot fly might smell the carrots, pop in there, lay its eggs, your bucket's wasted. So ideally, no thinning of carrots. Okay, so this surface is quite rough at the moment. What we want is we want a smooth surface to sow our seeds on. So we use this pizza base. We simply sit it on top, gently press it down like that. That should give us a reasonably flat surface. Hey, how about that? Okay, so we've got our reasonably flat surface. What I do next is, I put this template on there, and what I like to do is sow one seed every other square. So that ensures I get the space in between the seeds. One seed in every other square. Now if you want you can go one seed in every square. You can go one seed in every two squares, it's entirely up to you. But manage your expectations. How many carrots do you think you can reasonably get out of a 10 inch water bucket? Come on, how many? How many? Well, you might be surprised actually, but, but at the end of this video when you see those screenshots, you might actually be surprised. Uh, but the reason I get those results is because I do manage my expectations. So I go one seed every other square. And the way I do that is I put some water in this uh, bottle top and with a matchstick and I usually have uh, a container of some description on there, maybe a small saucer with the seeds on. And I pick a seed up and I pop it in there. Now the screenshots you're going to see at the end of this video will show um, the various stages of that. The seeds you'll see that I'm using uh, don't look like carrot seeds, they're a round green seed. They are actually carrot seeds but they're pelleted. Pelleted means the seed's coated, there's a better chance of germination. Uh, for me it's easier to pick up and easier to see. If you want to grow pelleted seeds, um, just google pelleted vegetable seeds pelleted seeds, uh, pelleted carrot seeds, you probably find them. But yeah, you can and I also do this um, with your bog standard carrot seeds that aren't pelleted. They're, they're just as easy to pick up. Um, sometimes they become a bit difficult to see on the soil. Uh, you need to keep your eye on where you're going. But hey, if you over sow it, don't panic. At least you've made the effort. If you drop a seed and it drops in a square, you don't want it to be. Don't panic, just leave it. Just leave it. Okay. So you eventually get this bucket sown with seeds. Right. We take the grid off and we gently, and I mean gently, spray those seeds. Now, if you go at it like a bullet again, all those seeds will finish up on one side of this bucket. So it's a spray. In fact, you may choose to spray the soil before you sow the seeds, before you put the seeds on top. Okay, now then, if we'd gone another way with this, we would be in trouble. There's 1,600 seeds in there, so we tear the top off the packet, we pour some into our hand, and we're going to do this, aren't we? We haven't a clue how many we've got in our hand and we haven't a clue how many we're dropping on there but we can see them going on and there doesn't look to be a lot. And we do this and we do this and we do this. We get the end and we've still some seeds in the palm of our hand. Well it seems a shame to put those back in the packet and there doesn't seem to be that many in there. Hey, believe me, you've just sown a hundred seeds. Are you nuts? Do you think you're going to get a hundred seeds, a hundred carrots out of a small water book? It ain't going to happen. They'll be as skinny as a pencil. They'll be useless. And that's because you haven't um, 
prepared for success, that's because you haven't managed your expectations. What's your expectations? Would you be happy with 10 carrots? Is that not enough? 20 carrots? Is that not enough? 50? 40? I don't know. Well, manage your expectations and use that grid to sow the seeds. If you think 50 would be good, try and get 50 in there evenly spaced. If you think 20 is about as much as you'll get in there, 20 evenly spaced, but just evenly spaced them. Am I sounding like a broken record? <laughs> I'm sick of listening to myself. You must be sick of listening to me. Anyway, where we are. So we've got those seeds on here, right. All these seeds are going to be planted at the same depth now because what we're going to do is we're going to drizzle more soil on top until all those seeds are covered. Okay. Then we're going to press down again. So if we put a quarter of an inch of soil on top of that, on top of those seeds, they're all in at a quarter of an inch depth. Then we'll spray them again. Then we'll put a ticket in. And then we'll just wait for the magic to happen. And all we need after that is a little bit of sunshine and some rain. Um, if we don't get sunshine, cloudy days are fine. If we don't get rain, we can water them. Now I have been asked about fertiliser. Before I saw this bucket, and hopefully that's in two or three weeks time, I'll empty this soil back out into the wheelbarrow. I'll probably incorporate into it something like blood fish and bone, grow more, any of the um, balanced fertilizers. By balanced I mean the three principal numbers are all about equal, seven, seven, seven. Mix it in, bang it back in there, that's it fertilized for the year. That's it fertilized for the season. But before I even kicked off this growing year, this soil has been used for at least a decade, 10 years at least, this soil's been going in and out of buckets. It's been growing potatoes, beetroot, um, lettuce, celery, parsnips, carrots, onions, grow all kinds of things. And each year at the end of the year, and you'll see that in some of these screenshots, I build a rack of buckets full of used soil. And they over winter, they over autumn. And after about six months on that rack, under a layer of chop and drop, which is, in my case, um, seaweed leaves and grass, all the goodness of that has gone into that soil over that six month. It's all gone in there. That soil's been fired up, and now I'm adding some blood fish and bone, even more. So there's no need uh, to fertilize these carrots. I've fertilized the soil, I've managed the soil, I've worked on the soil. Um, so the soil should be good to go. Uh, and any of the um, chop and drop that's left on top of this, I've simply taken it off, like so. And then I've um, riddled this soil. Now, the, the chop and drop that I have taken off, um, what's left of it in this precious little, I'll incorporate that into some of the buckets that I'm going to be growing potatoes in because they can take a, a rougher soil than carrots, they're not bothered about obstructions. They'll be, they'll be fine with that. Okay, so watch the rest of this video, you're coming to the good bit now, um, and let me know what you think. And if you want to see carrots being grown from start to finish, uh, a video that I popped up some time ago, it's probably my most popular video on YouTube, it's called HGV Grow Carrots Start to Finish HGV Grow Carrots Start to Finish Watch that video, I think you'll enjoy it and I hope you enjoyed this video